Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. Now that we completed the design for the content browser, I'm going to use it in the save file dialog. Right now we are using the Windows save file dialog, which is great, but it doesn't confine the user to the content folder. Also, it would be visually more uniform if we used our own content browser, because we made it and we are proud of it. Since using the content browser this way is different from how it is normally used, we need to add a couple of properties that configure the content browser for different usages. First, I'll create a new dialog window which appears when we want to save a file to the content folder. We set the font color to use the editor's color theme as well as the startup location, title and the size properties. We also use the primal dialog style for this window. Next, I'll add two rows in a grid. The first row contains the content browser and the second row contains the text box for the file name and some buttons similar to Windows Save File dialog. Again, I need to change the namespace in both XAML and code behind files. Now we are able to add the content browser here. I'll give it a name because I'm going to access it in code behind. Okay, here is something new that I don't understand about WPF. After putting the content browser here, the designer fails to render the window, and the only way I could get it to work again is by accessing the toggle buttons icon in the content browser using a different notation. The toggle button that is used to toggle between list view and tile view has a style and the image that is used for the button will change depending on whether or not the button is checked. However, if you set the image's source in the style trigger like this, it will fail to render for some reason. Rewriting it like this solves the problem, but I've got no idea why this happens for this particular case. After all, it works fine for the default image, so why not for this one? Anyway, now we can see the content browser. The toggle button is not displayed correctly, but that's fine. It will be right when we run the editor. Now I'll add the text box in which the user can type the file name and the buttons that save or cancel the operation. We need to attach a click event handler for when the user clicks on save button or presses enter on the keyboard. I'm going to write a method that gets and validates the file name from the text box. If it succeeds in returning a file path, we can pass it to the control that created this window by putting it in the save file path property, after which we also close the save file dialog window.
So in the file name validation method, we get the folder location we are currently in and the file name given by the user. We return false if the file name is null or empty. Next, we add the asset extension if it's not already in the file name. Now we can construct the full path from the selected folder and the file name. As I mentioned, we'll make sure that the file name doesn't contain any invalid characters. In addition, if a file already exists with the same name, we ask the user if they want to overwrite it. Finally, we display the error message if there is one. This is good for basic functionality. Now let's use it in primitive mesh dialog, where we save procedurally generated geometry assets. All we need to do is use our own save file dialog here instead. I'm leaving the window open, but it also makes sense if you'd rather close it after the geometry is saved. In that case, you can simply call close method. So remember that the data context for this dialog is a geometry editor, which implements the iAsset editor interface. It's got an asset property, which has a save method that we call here when we want to save the asset. Now let's try and see if it works. When saving our geometry asset, we see the new save file dialog appear with the content browser which seems to be working fine. The toggle button is also displayed correctly. The first thing I notice is that I can select files, but I'd like the file's name to appear in the text box as well. That's something I'll fix next, but first let's give our geometry here a name and save it. As you can see, it was saved and added to the content browser successfully. Okay, now I'd like to add a few dependency properties to the content browser view, which we can use to define its behavior. One thing I already mentioned was the ability to synchronize the text in file name's text box with the selected item. However, we are also able to select multiple items, which doesn't make sense when we are saving just one file. So we need to have a means to disable it. Let's start with the latter. Here I add a new dependency property by typing in prop dp and pressing the tab key. We can use this dependency property to set the selection modes for the list view in the content browser. I would also like to configure what file access operations are allowed. For example, in the case of save file dialog, I would like to disable reading from files. Oh, and we must not forget to set a default value for these. And the last one for now is the currently selected item. 
We can use this to set the file name in save file dialogs text box when the selection changes. Note that access modifiers of content info class and selected item didn't match, so I made this property internal. In fact, we don't need any public properties or methods because we only use one.NET assembly for the editor, so everything can be internal or private, I think. I guess typing public is just easier. Now we can bind the text box in save file dialog to selected item dependency property. It should be one way though, because obviously we don't want to rename the file we selected. I also set the selection mode to single and file access to write only for the content browser. And finally, I'd like to add just one more feature here, and that's to save the asset when the user double clicks a file. So let's add an event handler for that. Here we check if the double clicked item was in fact a selected item in the content browser, and if so, we pretend that the save button was clicked by the user. Apparently, I forgot to actually set the value in selected item property. To do that, we need to add another event handler in the list view, which is called when the selection changes. We set selected item property using the selected item of the list view, but only if it's not a directory. Now you can see the file name of the selected item appear in the text box. We are still able to select multiple items. To use the value in our dependency property, I need to bind it to the selection mode property of the list view. You can also put it directly in the body of the list view if you prefer. Apparently, for this one to take effect, I do need to rebuild the application. As you can see, only one item can be selected now. Also, when a file is double-clicked, we get asked if we want to overwrite that file. However, choosing to overwrite actually creates another file. That's because we are appending the LOD name to the end of the file name that was given. I did this to be able to save geometry assets that contain more than one object, which could only happen when we import a scene from a 3D file. However, when we only have one object to save, we can just use the file name. And that's what I'm going to do here. Now if we choose to overwrite a file, it will be replaced with a new geometry. As you can see here, the plane that we had before was replaced with this pyramid shape. I would like to use the next couple of minutes to fix a memory leak. To illustrate what a memory leak is, let me set a breakpoint in refresh method of the content browser. We see that when I change something in the content folder, this method is called once. So if I press F5, the application resumes its execution. Now let's open the save file dialog a couple times and close it. Again, when I create a new folder, our breakpoint is hit. 
This time, however, when I press F5, we see that this method is called again. If you'd like to fix this on your own, please go ahead and pause the video. The refresh method is called for each one of the content browsers that were created by the save file dialog. Normally, you would expect them to be gone when we close the dialog. But it seems something is keeping them from being destroyed. And that's the fact that we gave the main window a pointer to each instance of content browser when we attached this event handler to main windows data context changed event. Because we never detach the content browser from main window, it will stay alive. This not only uses extra memory, it also wastes CPU resources because it keeps updating its data. So it's a bad idea to leave it like this. I don't really have an elegant solution for it. The best way I can come up with is to make content browser view to implement the iDisposable interface. In the dispose method, we detach from main windows data context changed event and also dispose our own data context, which is the content browser's view model. Then whoever is using the content browser can call its dispose method to properly destroy it. For example, in the save file dialog, we dispose the content browser when the dialog window is closing. Now if we do the same test, we see that it still doesn't work. This time, the problem is caused by refresh timer, which is static and therefore has a longer lifetime than the content browser. It also holds pointers to each instance of content browser that we create, which results in the same memory leak. The staticness of refresh timer was a copy-paste error, which is easily fixed by removing the static keyboard. Now we see that the refresh method is called only once and that's because of the one content browser that we still have opened in the editor. I hope this made sense. It's a mistake that's really easy to make and I'm sure I'll continue making it because it's so subtle. Great, now that we solved the bugs and added some extra functionality to the content browser and the editor, I'm happy to call it a day for this video. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care and happy game engineering.